Good morning. I'd like to welcome all of you, those of you. Uh, we'd especially like to welcome those of you who are listening on the radio and watching uh, over the internet. This is the service of Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church in Stevensville, Michigan. I'm Pastor Measle along with Pastor Yeager. And especially this day for our radio broadcast, uh, it is broadcast in loving memory of Albert Reschke, given by Sally Reschke. So we thank her for her sponsorship for our radio broadcast today. Especially this day, we would like to thank all of the uh, mothers. Ha wish you all a happy Mother's Day. To all of the mothers out there, we thank you for all of the, that you have done for your children and your families. And for all of us, I think it's appropriate that we remember and honor our mothers on this Mother's Day, whether they are still with us here on this earth or have been already translated into the church triumphant. Mothers are such a wonderful blessing to us, having been uh, the, the, the source of life for all of us. God has given us life through our mothers and has raised us. And mothers do such a wonderful job of raising their children and caring for their families and bringing them up in the knowledge of the love of Christ. So we thank you all to, to all of those mothers out there. And we, uh, the one, it's wonderful to take a day to, to honor and remember all of our mothers. A quick reminder for all of our members, we are continuing to offer private communion. You can come in Monday through Friday at either 10.30 or 1.30 standard times, uh, or Thursday evening at 7.00. 7 p.m. Uh, no appointment needed for those times. Uh, if you would like to come in at a different time, that's fine. Just give us a call and make an appointment. But uh, otherwise, that's continuing to be available to all of our members. With that, we'll begin our service.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, 
Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise. That among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Concord, Luther's Large Catechism, Part 2, The Apostles' Creed, Article 3. Everything, therefore, in the Christian church is ordered toward this goal. We shall daily receive in the church nothing but the forgiveness of sin through the word and signs to comfort and encourage our consciences as long as we live here. So even though we have sins, the grace of the Holy Spirit does not allow them to harm us. For we, we are in the Christian church where there is nothing but continuous, uninterrupted forgiveness of sin. This is because God forgives us and because we forgive, bear with, and help one another. But outside of this Christian church where the gospel is not found, there is no forgiveness, as also there can be no holiness. Therefore, all who seek and wish to earn holiness, not through the gospel and forgiveness of sin, but by their works, have expelled and severed themselves from this church. Our first lesson for this, the uh, uh, fifth Sunday after e Easter, comes from Acts chapter 6. Now in these days, when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews, 
because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching in the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the Holy Spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip and Procurus and Nicanor and Timon and Parmenas and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, and of the Cyrenians and of the Alexandrians, and those from Cilicia and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. And Stephen said, Brothers and fathers, hear me. You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did not your fathers persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered, you who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. Now when they heard these things, they were enraged. And they ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. Our epistle lesson comes from 1 Peter chapter 2. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia! We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Alleluia. Alleluia. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Alleluia.
the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Once again, I'd like to welcome all those listening on the radio and watching on the internet. You're listening to the service of Christ Lutheran Church in Stevensville, Michigan. I'd also like to wish a happy Mother's Day and a blessed Mother's Day to all the mothers in this congregation and those watching on the internet. Thank you for the work you have done with your families and the blessings you continue to bring every day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text for this sermon today comes from 1 Peter chapter 2. You may be seated. Have you ever given any thought to what goes into building a house? First, you have to pick out the space or property where you want to build the house, then that space would be leveled for the new home. Soon after that, builders would work up frames in order to pour the foundation, then starts the framing for the house, along with the intricate systems behind it, like, for example, the plumbing or the electricity, pipes, wires, vents, water supply lines. Dearly beloved, as you can tell from this, I am no builder, nor do I have any experience with what it takes to build a house. But from what I can tell you is that building a house can take an awfully long time. And there's an obvious amount of work that is involved with not only making the house, but also maintaining the house throughout the years. In our epistle lesson today, Peter continues his work on Christians who have been struggling with being exiled and persecuted by a world surrounded in paganism and unbelief. In this section, like Builders working on a house, St. Peter attempts to build up the church by pointing them to the firm foundation of God's Word. In this section, Peter compares us to stones. And as you know, stones are an important part of ancient architecture back during the time of Christ. That being said, Peter calls us living stones built up by God through the foundation of Jesus Christ our Lord. And through the words of Peter and by the actions of Christ, you are a precious stone rejected by man but chosen by God. Dearly beloved, as you know, nothing is as solid as a rock. And nothing is more stubborn than a bunch of rocks that don't listen. I guess that's why sometimes Scripture would compare our hearts to that of a stone, especially when we hear the Word of God and continue to do the exact opposite. However, that's not the case with Peter in our epistle lesson today. As I said before, Peter compares us to living stones built up by the Word of God. But as strong and solid as stones may be, these stones also deal with their own share of burdens. Have you ever heard of a scientific term called erosion? Erosion is a term that we use that describes what happens to a rock or stone that gets worn down through time due to weather and other natural consequences. That being said, erosion is a term that simply reveals that even these rocks aren't as strong as we think. And yes, given a certain amount of time, Due to the burdens of the natural world, even these rocks can break down and wither away. Now, as 
Peter is writing his epistle, he writes again to Christians dealing with exile and persecution. Christians who have been rejected because of their belief in Christ. Christians who have been separated by Christ and his good gifts. I'm sure that through persecution and the tribulations that were set before them, many of them were feeling pressure. Many of them were dealing with the fiercest roar of the lion through the devil's mouth. And through the pressures of the world, some of them might have gone back to the passions of the flesh. Some of them might have turned away, and others might be losing hope. So what about you? Have you been dealing with any pressure in our current situation? Have our trials and tribulations caused you to lose hope in the coming future? Have you been built up and stir-crazy, locked inside your house, waiting for those doors to open? Have you been overcome with grief and despair, anger or resentment towards your neighbor? The truth is that in these past few months, our situation has landed us in a similar position as the Christians that Peter is talking to in his epistle. And as we deal with our own tribulations, some of us will be tempted to revert back to the passions of the flesh. Original sin. Some of us might lash out at our loved ones in anger. Some of us might be stirred up with envy against those who have more. Others might be tempted to fall in a state of unbelief. Whatever the case, the point is that like the rocks that wither away due to the natural consequence of coarse and abrasive weather, we too can start to break down and wither away due to the trials and tribulations we face in our lifetime. But that's not, again, that's not the case in our epistle this morning. In fact, Peter is writing this epistle in order to keep the hearts of the Christian from failing. St. Peter attempts to build up the hearts of the Christians everywhere by reminding them of the sure and certain foundation in Christ Jesus our Lord. And if you just read the first few chapters of this epistle, you can see how Peter is able to weave Christ in the current situation that the reader is dealing with. Dearly beloved, that's because God has made this Christ to be the very cornerstone of our confession. His life, death, and resurrection have become the pinnacle of the gospel that is preached into your ear continually day by day. For your life is more than what you deal with in this present age. And the life that God has given to you has been bought by the body and blood of the God-man, Jesus Christ. St. Peter uses the gospel as a way to hydrate those in exile in order to build up, in order to build them up to the living waters that flow from the side of Christ. Consider nursing infants that continually cling to the very things that give them milk in order to survive as they are being grown. So also, the spiritual milk of God's word is the much needed nutrients we need during our present crisis. This is because that the spiritual milk that God gives to us will continually drive us to cling to the very foundation we have, the cross of Christ. For Christ has risen, and by his death and resurrection, God has shown the life 
that he desires to give to all those who believe in his name. In this, you are a chosen race and a royal priesthood. And by the very promise found in the forgiveness of sins, God is able to work in you salvation and give to you eternal life. And as we see our loved ones struggle through similar tribulations, let us all build each other up in the love that God gives to us through Jesus Christ. For in this way, God seeks to unite us all in one mind. You are a precious stone chosen by God, which He has built up as a temple in order that He might dwell with you forever in spirit. And as living stones, God seeks to build us up with each other and surround us by the very gifts He gives in His Word and Sacrament. God seeks to dwell with you even through tribulations in order that He might deliver you and lead you to the very glory that awaits all of us in the life to come. In this way, God has made you a people for his own possession. And in this way, God continues to reveal his mercy. So, be of good cheer. You are not alone. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in this Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. We continue by confessing our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the Father Almighty. As newborn infants who long for the pure spiritual milk, so let us come before the Lord seeking his mercy with confidence that his grace will be sufficient for all of our needs. Let us pray. Almighty Father, everlasting God, your Son has revealed you to us as a merciful Lord. Give to us your Holy Spirit that we may believe in him whom you have sent and do the greater works that he told us we will do in his name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you have promised to build up your church to be a holy priesthood, that your people might offer the spiritual sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving acceptable to you. We pray that you would bless your church and bring all congregations back together. Bless our members and our pastors as they proclaim Christ to us. Bless all of our church workers and our teachers and those who are preparing for full-time church vocations, that your church may ever be supplied with faithful leaders and servants of your church. Be with our missionaries, including Deaconess Caitlin Warden de Ramirez in the Dominican Republic and Reverend Roger James in the Philippines. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you have established the home and blessed those who show us your love. Bless all mothers and the children in their care. Bless all families and make their homes places of blessing and love, where your word is spoken, forgiveness reigns, and love is displayed. Give us good examples to inspire youth to all that is good and pure 
and to seek after all these things. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of our mothers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, your power brought all things into being, and still you preserve all that you have made. Bless our nation, our president, our Congress, our governor, and all elected and appointed civil servants at all levels. Be with our military and guard and protect them, including Alex Root, Ellison Blake, James Virgi, and Joseph Schaefer. Grant that all of our civil servants may honor you and your purpose, establishing order and justice, encouraging virtue, and protecting all life. Give wisdom and moderation to them in their leadership for the well-being of our nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O merciful Father, you have compassion upon the sick and those who are in need and have promised not to ignore them in their afflictions. We pray that you would turn back this pandemic across the globe and give to us relief. Bless the sick with healing, those who suffer with strength and patience, and the dying with peace. Hear us on behalf of those who have requested our prayers. Addie Scheffler, Addison Dunn, Amanda Clark, Amy Manti, Connie Schmidt, Dave White, Delia McClintock, Denise McClintock, Dave Knuth, Erica Steffen, Fernie Rance, Fred Knuth, Jim Walters, Lenny Weiser, Mary Panzica, Mary Walters, Miro Versick, Nancy Duke, Richard Wandell, Ron Zoki, Sally Knuth. Also, we pray for Aubrey Hamby, Austin Arndt, Bruce Werdeman, Chris Dunn, Gertrude Keen, Jim Russell, Lois Hernandez, Marion Gerken, Marilyn Bars, Paula Hicks, Phil Oberhaus, Rose Kepke, Sharon Lennock, Taryn Schrader, and William Mall. Grant them health and healing according to your, your will, and give them strength of faith in the knowledge of your love through Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate Father, you are not aloof from the needs of this body and life, and you have called us to love our neighbor in need and give aid to the poor. Give us courage and faith that we may not fear sharing the resources that you have supplied with those who live in want, especially the widows, the orphans, and the unemployed. Let love be perfected among us to drive out selfish fears. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you, God, for your goodness in hearing the prayers of your people and granting us confidence to approach your throne of mercy. Hear us now in the name of and for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.